So here we are, we're going to do another film analysis for you, and this time it's the second part of the of, of two clips on the Imperial War Museum website of the 43rd Wessex Division's Hill 112 footage of the 8th Battalion the Middlesex Regiment, uh, the C Company there, number 10 platoon, and their Vickers machine guns firing. So we get some more uh, information, uh, uh, another look at uh, disassembling and, and reassembling the gun, stripping and assembling the gun, the universal carriers with the medium machine gun fittings, and the uh, and firing itself, as well as the kit. So it's worth pointing out, we've got 24th of July 1944, and A.C. Gross is the production individual there. He's the soldier in the Army Film and Photographic Unit, and it's his name that we see scribbled on the Jeep that he's using as his clapperboard, uh, providing the information for the scene. So let's take a look. So this is the information I was referring to. Uh, let's say you've got Gross, the soldier himself, there is camera roll and 24th of July 1944. Now in his first shot, he's got a group of men in front of their universal carrier. I'm just going to pause it there and let's take a look at the universal carrier because this is made for medium machine guns. As we highlighted in a previous video, it's got the Stacy towing attachment there so it could tow six pounders um mainly uh but your know, trailers and stuff as well so it could be used in action but it's also got the emergency mounting for the vickers up on the top there and you can just see the straight line of it and then the slight curved piece at the end for the shoulder and you can see the outline of the ammunition liner at a slight angle so that meant it could be traversed used by any of the three men so you had the number one uh, in here you had the number two in the rear left compartment and the number three in the rear right with the number four and the driver in the front compartment. So as we'll see in another video at a later date, it's designed to be fired over the back right corner of the carrier. So that the number two is then on the right hand side of the gun with the feed block and the number one is behind the gun. The Number three pretty much keeps his head down uh, until you need to dismount the vehicle. Um, they're disassembling the gun. So let's press play and see what they're up to. Uh, it will zoom in in a moment and we'll see a different shot here we go so we've got two guys here uh one in his general service cap uh hanging half off his head as is so often seen with these and the other in his cap comforter this chap here looks to be in a sort of an issue or private purchase cardigan um it's not one that i, I recognize as a, as, as a service pattern um but that's not what we're on about we're on about the gun so we've got an early fluted water jacket so pre um second world war production most likely to be a First World War War Office stock gun. Uh, some were used later on, as we've discussed, uh, from old stocks, but highly likely to be a First World War gun. And actually, if we look at the lightning and the milling and the lines that are in this left-hand case part of the casing there, you can see how it's got milled out sections. It's got these pieces here that were milled out to save weight. So it's likely to be a quite an early, a pre-1917 First World War gun, still in service in July 1944. Now they've got it mostly assembled, uh, mostly disassembled, mostly stripped down already. Um, so you, know, you will be able to see all the parts. He's cleaning it off there with a piece of flannelette. Worth noting though, what can we see that's missing from his general service cap? There's no cap badge, uh, or certainly doesn't seem to be. At the very most, there's a blackened plastic cap badge in there, but highly unlikely, I think, from the angles that we're seeing. So he's wearing no cap badge. Another angle here, uh, we can see that they've got the muzzle attachment off. This chap's cleaning the feed block. Um, can't remember what this chap's doing, but they've all got, a few of them have got cigarettes on the go, which is always entertaining to see. So he's cleaning the muzzle, this chap here is cleaning the muzzle cup off the muzzle attachment there. And then there's, they're reassembling the gun, he's putting the feed block back in, fitting the muzzle attachment and the uh, flash eliminator there, putting the uh, spare parts wallet back in the case, not very gently. Um, so he's fitting the lock, this is interesting in here. So he's putting the lock back and if you notice it's not going down and he stops it there. Let's just uh, just scrub back a little bit because it's really interesting because so those of you that even with deactivated guns have tried to do this he hasn't got he that will not shut because he hasn't got the bottom of that lock that hasn't gone through the um pieces in the side plates so the lock is sort of shaped like this and what that means 
is that there is corresponding slots on the um it actually goes like that it goes all the way through and it's just one set of slots or on either side the recoiling portions the side plates that this has to go through um you know through the gap there to drop low enough and what's he what he's doing at the moment is he's running that lock along the top of the gap um, there in that side plates so it won't go down and he's, he's struggling uh, so you can see let's say press play again you can see how he's struggling to get that shut and it won't it's really interesting to see your train machine gunner having that problem that I'm sure so many of you will have done as well so they're now going to fit the gun back onto the universal carrier mounting uh, as I said it's onto that emergency mount and you can see you know, the, the, it's got this stay that comes down here as well that so gross this is second roll and what's interesting here is we see the guys running across to their gun positions they're not uh, working alongside their gun positions so they've they're staying in the head row here lessons from this are that um, we noticed in a war diary previously that it talks about having gun positions in the middle of a field and nowhere near hedgerows because hedgerows are ranged for artillery if you've got things in the middle of the field you know a good 25 meters 25 yards away from your position um or from a hedgerow that's already might be ranged on a map you know we're fighting in enemy territory now um so they've worked it all out you can um you know save yourself from shelling or mortar fire which is an interesting point i believe is demonstrated by them having to run across uh, to the different positions here now they are um obviously coming from their from their uh, uh, positions um, where the carriers and stuff are in the hedgerow if you just see the guy has lined up his um your uh, dial sight there and made sure it was laid you've got number two feeding the ammunition belt these are the spiders again so we've talked about spiders before uh supporting the camouflage net so that will have been whipped back um this chap's got the field telephone i always like to look at this guy because his webbing is really light i don't think that's evidence of blancoing um if it is it's really well worn we've then got his printed uh battalion flash for the 8th battalion middlesex regiment below is printed 43rd division wessex wyvern and no shoulder strap uh, shoulder flash in place nothing that says middlesex other than that battalion flash um but his pistol holster there so he's he's got no rank on either um then we've still got those printed flashes visible look there's that lightened piece and these guys are opening up ammunition liners they're not doing very very well uh we've then got a um another guy here in his cartridge carriers i think that is rather than the pistol ammunition pouch um and you know rifle and, and the other flashes in, in visible there and we've got a guy in just his jumper uh, to see them quite relaxed so and there we go so that was it hopefully that was of interest pulled out a few more points for you um as we said that's available on the iwm website if you want to watch it without me uh, talking over the top of it but I hope you find it interesting. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.